Welcome. Hello, my name is Diane Jordan. I'm a member of the MIT Sloan admissions team and I am joined by my colleague Stephanie Butler. Um, also on our admissions team, we have a couple of other people who are going to be helping out in the Q&A, which is where we ask you to submit your questions, Kayon Ellis and Jen Barba. Uh, I speak for all of us in extending a warm welcome to everyone tuning into this webinar. Uh, this is going to be a webinar we, where we hope to share uh, deep insights into the finance and business analytics programs and how these programs can help you to develop key skills for the future. Uh, thank you also to everyone who submitted questions in advance. Um, we please, as I said, feel free to use the Q&A function. Um, we will get to as many of your questions as possible um, in the time that we have today. So I'd like to um, start off by talking a little bit about what I hopefully many of you know is the MIT Sloan mission. Um, we are a mission driven school. And as you can see here, our mission is to develop principled innovative leaders who improve the world. It goes without saying that in the past six months, we have been facing an unprecedented global challenge that has impacted all of our lives. Uh, and it should also come as no surprise that MIT Sloan has, was quick to tackle the challenge and a group of our Sloan faculty got together and developed a COVID-19 alliance, making recommendations to help healthcare and government officials. They were doing that in a variety of ways, backing data to help with the decision-making finance faculty uh, that you see here, such as Antoinette Shore and Andrew Lowe, um, are working with industry leaders in the pursuit of a vaccine. And in the spring, a group of students got together and pulled off a virtual global hackathon to find tangible solutions. With a focus on how Africa can tackle COVID-19, MIT Sloan students, faculty, and alumni around the globe have rolled up their sleeves to fight the pandemic. These are just a few ways that MIT Sloan is making an impact. So you might ask, what is the MIT experience and what can I expect? While we are here to talk about the business analytics and finance programs, I think it's important to provide some context around our portfolio. Uh, students who come to MIT Sloan are joining a community of individuals from a diverse set of backgrounds. Our portfolio of programs is intentional. And as a result, we have a community of people with varied experiences and perspectives who are coming together, studying a mix of disciplines, but all with a common goal to make a positive impact on the world. This portfolio of programs is one of the unique benefits at MIT Sloan.
Um, of course, it would not be an MIT program if there was not a rigorous academic component. So a big part of why you are joining us, hopefully, um, or considering joining us is this academic experience. And so um, along the right hand side, you can see some of the components of that experience um, from a high level perspective. We are looking for people who have demonstrated academic excellence in the past and who are confident um, are be able to demonstrate that academic excellence at MIT. Of course, the world renowned faculty um, are a huge part of that component. Not only are these thought leaders in their fields, Diane already mentioned a couple of them as it pertains to COVID, um, but these are also people who will want to get to know you and actually take a role, play a role in your academic experience. So these are people you have access to and who you will partner with along your learning journey. Uh, the hands-on action learning, this is a huge component at MIT and MIT Sloan. MIT's motto is actually uh, mens et manus, or mind and hand, uh, when translated from Latin. So we believe very strongly that not only, um, you know, it's really not enough just to sit in a lecture or read a textbook, you really have to put what you're learning into practice. And so that's where some of this, uh, these key features uh, play a role. We'll get into this in a little bit more depth later, but of course, an opportunity to take a deep dive into finance or analytics. Uh, you can then tailor the experience through concentrations and certificates, action learning. Some of the hallmarks for these programs are going to be the finance lab and the capstone. Um, and then of course, supplementing that with study tours and tracks, which is great not only for uh, building knowledge, but also um, as it pertains to career uh, resources and career development. So in tandem with what you're learning and experiencing in the classroom, uh, clubs, forums, and events uh, that happen outside of class are going to be another big part of your experience at MIT Sloan. Um, as you can see here, there's a large um, we, we selected um, some clubs that we thought might be interest, of interest to uh, students, or we've seen uh, finance and business analytics students show interest in in the past. Um, these are uh, just a handful of the professional clubs offered. Uh, professional and uh, other clubs are student-led, so you do have an opportunity to um, put your stamp and, uh, you know, uh, uh, have an impact and affect the programming through these clubs, uh, which will of course provide you not only um, insight into those industries and those functions, but it also helps you develop a community internally at Sloan um, and externally within that industry. So let's uh, dive a little bit more deeply into each of these programs, uh, starting with the Master of Business Analytics program. Um, this is uh, a deep dive into data science. Uh, the focus here is on applying the tools of modern data science optimization and machine learning. I wanna take uh, a second to just reiterate one of those words, applying the tools. So uh, the MBAN program is a partnership between MIT Sloan and MIT's Operations Research Center. And that's really important because one of the distinctive factors of this program is not only are you going to learn some of the more technical aspects of data analytics tools, but you're also learning how to um, apply those to real world business challenges. How can you interpret that data um, and help provide solutions for leaders uh, within your organization or for clients that you're working with? So this really, um, uh, it, it, it's not, only a technical degree. Of course, you will have that technical foundation, but you're also learning how to apply that data. So we developed this program um, not too long ago uh, to answer the industry's demand uh, for people who can uh, apply those tools. Um, and we're targeting right now around 60 students per class. Um, quick, uh, I, I skipped the, the first bullet, but we are a 12 month program which uh, if you wanna advance the slide, I think we'll dive a little bit deeper there. So it's 12 months, uh, September to September. These are PhD level courses and the degree itself is STEM designated. 
So you'll start uh, when you arrive on campus um, with the required core curriculum. Um, as you can see, you are already starting to develop those tools and machine learning and optimization um, software, um, but also you know, putting them into uh, practice right away. Uh, January is a little bit unique at MIT, so uh, that month uh, sort of stands alone. Um, you will have a course in ethics and data privacy, and you'll also start um, laying the foundation for your capstone project, uh, which I'll talk about in just a few seconds. So during the spring, um, there's several various electives to choose from um, when it comes to data and analysis. Um, and then you'll also be working heavily through the capstone project uh, while you're on campus, February to May. Um, and then finally, June to August, uh, you'll be working, it will be essentially an internship. So with that same capstone company, um, but on site um, at their organization. So this capstone project, oh, I'm gonna quickly touch on the capstone. Um, this capstone project is another unique factor of this program. So it is seven months in length and allows you to use those tools, uh, use those skills that you're developing on one of those real world challenges. So um, this is action learning at its finest. Um, there's a number of different organizations that we work with across various industries, um, from retail to consulting to transportation. Um, and again, you are going to be working with a classmate of yours um, with mentors from the company who are you going to guide you through the project. You'll have faculty support um, and the support from a PhD student from the ORC as well. So great way to get your hands dirty and actually put those tools into practice. The last thing I'll mention about the capstone is there is a $22,000 tuition offset um, uh, as a result of your work uh, with this company. So uh, a quick look at what the class is shaping up to look like. Um, so this was, uh, this is our current sort of incoming class. So the class of 2021, uh, this was as of May 6th, <clears throat> a little bit different, um, but generally, generally the same. You'll see uh, these are early career programs that we're talking about today. So on average, our students have about 16 months of work experience. Um, many are coming directly from undergraduate programs. And so uh, you will certainly not be alone if that, is, if that is the case for you. These are intended to help sort of kickstart your career um, in the field of data science. Um, you can see we're a very diverse group, 72% international. Um, I expect that to look uh, generally similar um, despite some challenges that we've been facing this year because of COVID-19. Um, you can see the undergraduate majors, we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit more deeply uh, later on, but we really are looking for people who come from a rigorous quantitative background um, for them to succeed in this program. Okay, so thank you, Stephanie. So let's talk uh, a little more detail about the Master of Finance. Um, MFIN is everything you would expect from MIT. It's a global um, reputation, of course, world-renowned faculty. Um, many of them have actually written the textbooks on modern finance. Um, a rigorous hands-on approach to finance. Um, we launched the MFIN program at the height of the global financial crisis in 2008 because we recognized that financial markets were changing rapidly and becoming more complex, and the industry needed more highly trained finance professionals. Um, with our rigorous STEM curriculum, which um, the MFIN program prepares you in 18 months, uh, there is an option to accelerate in 12 months. Uh, you can also let us know early on um, when you apply if that is actually the format you prefer. Um, but it is um, a rigorous curriculum. Um, it is intended to be adaptive and create um, you know, individuals who are strong problem solvers in an ever-changing world uh, and positions you for premier career opportunities in finance. 
Um, as I said, there is an option for 12 months, although a small number of our students actually choose to complete their degree in the shorter time frame. Uh, and it is, and as Stephanie mentioned in the business analytics program, uh, the MFIN program is also an early career professional program. Uh, I will get into a little bit more of the details around what that looks like. Um, but as I mentioned, it is a deep dive into quantitative finance. There is an action learning component that is um, very much a part and parcel of our motto and what we expect um, students to be able to accomplish in the time that they're in the program. Um, the finance lab is one of the action learning labs or for all intents and purposes courses um, that our MFIN students take. Uh, it's an opportunity to work closely um, in, in entirely in the month of January when there are no classes at MIT um, with a uh, sponsor, with a finance lab sponsor. The range of uh, projects that our student teams work on are very wide. Um, everything from asset managers to uh, working with perhaps organizations that are looking to grow their asset classes and want to do research. Uh, we have a number of our employers who also have these finance lab projects for our students. And again, it's a great opportunity to take what you're learning in the classroom and to put it into practical terms. Um, as with all of our programs across MIT Sloan, we have extensive career resources. Uh, students have dedicated MFIN career advisors who will work with them very early on. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the finance industry, employers and, and those opportunities typically um, start very early. So we have a summer term and those employers um, may not be recruiting necessarily during the summer term, but we are preparing our students uh, with a toolkit so that they can do an effective initially in the 18 month it's going to be for an internship search in the summer between their spring semester and the second fall semester. Uh, and then we do have concentrations. Um, these are optional. You can do one concentration only. Uh, for some students, it's a great way to send a strong signal to a potential employer that you've done some additional deep training and learned some additional skills in either capital markets, corporate finance, or financial engineering. And then just to give you a sense of the timeline and how the program is structured, as I mentioned, we start in the summer, uh, typically in the beginning of July. Uh, there is a, a lot of work that is done in the summer that is fundamental and required coursework around finance theory, corporate financial accounting, and financial mathematics, or for some students, it's the advanced mathematical me methods for financial engineering. Uh, you know, it's important to note, and this may be a good point, uh, to mention it is that our program, our MPIN program, while it is not a financial engineering program, um, we, we philosophically believe that students should learn the fundamentals of finance theory. Um, we also recognize that in this complex financial marketplace that students will benefit from additional quantitative skills. So those have been built into the program. And you'll see that as you continue and through any of the electives, the labs, the pro seminars that we do offer. Uh, and so uh, the 18 month is really the majority of our students have opted to pursue that for a number of reasons. The summer internship um, is certainly one of them, which is optional. Uh, many students do take advantage of it, uh, as well as the opportunity to take additional courses or get involved in more activities while they're um, in the program. And then a quick snapshot, um, and that's the way to look at this, of uh, the students. Uh, again, and as Stephanie mentioned earlier, this program, not unlike the business analytics, is an early career or early professional program. On average, our students come directly um, from university with on average 13 months of prior work experience, but that actually includes internships. I would say a little over 80% of the class typically are coming directly from university or a bachelor's degree. Um, and as you can see here, the undergrad majors are um, varied, um, definitely quite a few from the math and sciences, as well as business, commerce, economics, engineering, computer science, humanities, very strong and diverse in a student, international student population, 44% women. Um, so again, this is a snapshot but it's an opportunity for you to also take a look at um, what makes one successful in entering our program. 
And so that's a good segue in to talk about careers. Uh, after all, this is an investment in, of your time and resources. And we have dedicated career advisors um, for both our programs. Uh, they start working with students almost upon um, admission, um, but certainly as students begin to matriculate, there's early online access. You have dedicated advisors, advisors who will work with you one-on-one, -on -one, as well as collectively um, offering workshops again, putting together an effective toolkit so that you can be successful in whatever career you want to pursue. Um, there are career fairs and treks uh, that are relevant to each of the degree programs. We have um, Career Core, which is something that runs throughout the programs, workshops, seminars, lectures. Many of our alumni will join us um, to share their insights and feedback on how they've been able to take their degrees and, and segue into very successful careers as well. Um, and then, of course, we have um, lots of opportunities to network, as I said, with employers. Students have the opportunity to do that with not only the Sloan's career services, but also with the main campus at MIT. And just to give you an example of some of the typical um, careers and areas that our grads um, go to, uh, hopefully most of these companies for business analytics are recognizable. If you think of data science and you think of that as being a function across multiple and varied industries, and, and, and this is a testament to that when you look at uh, the company types of companies that have hired our graduates. Uh, some of the job titles, senior data scientist, analytics associate, machine learning scientist, all of these are what you might expect coming from a program such as ours. And the top industries, 43% um, of the most class uh, in 2019 went into consulting. Now that's a wide range of consulting. It could be risk analytics as part of consulting team. It can be very strategic or specific types of consulting working in industries, um, again, multiple industries. And then another 31% um, went into the technology. Um, we're very proud of the fact that 100% of our students had full-time offers at graduation. And then for the finance graduates, um, again, if you think of finance in terms of a discipline, it, there are many different functions within finance and our students have been able to really segue into across the board. Uh, again, if you look at 35% have gone into more quantitative analysis and trading, at the same time, 23% of our graduates have been interested in the more of traditional iBanking or advisory services and uh, across the board. Every year we have students who are also interested in more strategic financial consulting or um, risk management, working with central banks or governmental organizations. And the companies are wide ranging, multinationals uh, across the globe, and those opportunities for our students are um, and pretty much anywhere you might expect. Job titles, investment banking analysts, strategic and M&A associates, depending on how much prior internship or other experience you might have coming into the program will also be a factor in where you land. But the majority of our students, again, are going um, to land in opportunities that are at the early stage or early career. 100% um, of our students in the 18 month completed their internships and 72% of students accepted offers in the United States. So um, we're very happy with the opportunities that our students have been afforded. And as you might expect, it's MIT and many employers are very happy and interested in hiring our graduates. And so when we talk about our graduates, you become part of what we call the MIT nation. Uh, it's a very powerful network. We have 139,000 plus alumni around the globe. They're involved in 30,000 plus active companies. They've created something like 4.6 million jobs um, and a total annual revenue of 2 trillion. So it's pretty impressive when you think about where the alums are and this becomes part of your network and it's a very powerful one. Um, and something that we have found um, our students because of the way the program is structured and the opportunity you have when you are able to interact with people coming from different backgrounds and perspectives, um, it just adds a more robust um, and more engaging part of being this MIT nation and community. So let me talk a little bit now about admissions. Um, I'm sure you're all asking the question, 
what can I expect? What do I need to do in order to apply to the program? Uh, this is a checklist. We have not yet released the 2021 uh, MFIN or MBN uh, applications. They will be released and going live shortly. Uh, you will receive email communications about that, so stay tuned. But these components are pretty much um, generally what we have asked in the past and we expect will be the case. Again, we are you know, always looking for a resume. Uh, essays or short questions will be asked. Um, a lot around motivation. Why are you applying? What do you hope to achieve as a result of um, getting your degree? Uh, recommendation letters. Um, Generally, we are looking for professional as well as academic transcripts. Um, test scores, we are still, you know, uh, given the current situation with COVID-19, we are still um, reviewing what that um, we expect to ask of students and what that will look like. But again, we'll have that information once the applications are released. Um, in, in, very soon. And then a couple of video questions. It's really an opportunity for your application to come to life, so to speak. Um, but it, it is, these are generally speaking, the components of the applications. And then uh, we will invite a subset of our applicants to actually interview. Um, interviews are by invitation only um, and are conducted by the admissions committee. The deadlines, we have established those for 2021. So as you can see here for the MFIN program, it's January 5th. And for business analytics, it is January 7th. And I do want to expand a little bit because I know there were many questions about, you know, what are we looking for? What makes for someone being a successful or strong candidate for uh, either of our programs? And I think fundamentally you can look at this in, in three key areas. Um, the first is really your academic strength. Uh, you know, foundational or fundamental courses are, and I'm talking about at the university or bachelor's level, not necessarily at the advanced level, but fundamental mathematics, linear algebra, probability, statistics, multivariable calculus. For MFIN in particular, we're going to be looking at whether you've taken courses in finance, accounting, or economics. That's also valuable. For business analytics, it's your machine learning coursework, um, computer programming that you've had exposure to and where you've been able to do some work there. And that's true um, for both programs, uh, particularly when we think about R and Python, which are um, definitely at the very essential level being used um, across industries. And then your industry knowledge. Has work or internship experience in the field been related or what can you tell us about uh, the connection between why are you applying to a program such as finance or business analytics. What has your experience been again either work or internships um, a demonstrated understand understanding potential career paths. So do you and have you done research to uh, understand what it's going to take in the time that you're in the program to really get yourself up to speed so you can launch that career? And then do you have a passion for the field and really motivated to make an impact? It goes back to the MIT Sloan uh, mission. Um, and we believe that while you're coming to learn new skills, uh, we also have an expectation that at the graduate level, you are going to engage in our community in a significant way. Uh, and that is an important aspect of the third area that we're looking for, which is excellent communication and interpersonal skills. Having those written and spoken English language proficiency is going to have you feel more confident and enable you to be able to participate at a high level in all the great activities that MIT Sloan has to offer and the MIT ecosystem as a whole. And being an active member of our classroom and community as well as a team player. So these are just some of the things that we think are really valuable and important um, and that we hope that um, will help you as you start to think about the programs that we've just talked about today. I, I know that we have lots of questions coming in and hopefully they are getting answered um, at this point. Uh, we will go take a look and see if there are some additional questions that we can answer for you. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I uh, was looking through some of these great questions that are coming in. Um, I have a couple uh, that I saw in different forms over and over that I thought might be valuable to answer out loud. So you've heard both Diane and I uh, refer to these programs as early career programs. And so that, that is how they're positioned. If you have 
um, a significant amount of work experience or just something that seems um, greater in length than some of these averages that we've pointed out for these two programs. Um, you, it, it's not to say that you couldn't apply um, or that you wouldn't be reviewed, um, but I would encourage you to um, just be really thoughtful about where you are in your career and what you want out of the program. So, um, for example, we have our two-year MBA um, and, and another, uh, other forms of the MBA as well, including the Sloan Fellows MBA, that would allow you to focus on finance or business analytics, um, but just from a different perspective, from the perspective of someone who's had um, some more work experience and who might want to go into more of a leadership role afterwards. So yes, I can, you know, it might still be valuable to take courses that align with these two disciplines, um, but there's probably a good chance that the programs in this format are not going to be right for you. So for example, you know, we have a finance track in the MBA program, we have a business analytics certificate. So that can provide you the right credentials and you know, knowledge foundations. Um, but again, within that context of likely going into a mid-career role as opposed to an early career role. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Thanks, Stephanie. Yes, so there are definitely, and keep in mind that um, there are also for students in the uh, Master of Finance program, for example, if you'd also like to do a deeper dive into uh, data science, you can do the certificate in data science. And, and many of our students actually do take um, advantage of that opportunity. Diane, that um, reminds me of another question I saw a couple of times, actually, and that's, can people apply to both of these programs? And so the answer is yes. Um, Diane, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. So we definitely um, encourage students, you can apply to multiple programs at MIT Sloan. Um, keep in mind, they are separate applications and thereby separate admissions processes and, an, and separate admissions committees. Um, but absolutely, um, there's abs nothing preventing you from applying to both programs or multiple programs. Yeah, I would just add on to that. Again, just understand why you're applying to both programs. Don't think about it as two separate chances to attend you know, MIT Sloan, but really have a sense of, of why the MBA might be right for me and why MSIN might be right for me. Um, Diane, if you don't mind me asking you another question. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Can you talk a little bit about the, the uh, micro masters in finance? and if that has anything to do with unfin or how that aligns? So, uh, yeah, no, it's a great question. And I know that there were um, a couple of people who asked about it. So with the micro masters, um, it is um, part of the MITx um, online programming. Uh, so it is an entirely separate group from MIT Sloan's uh, programming that we've been talking about. That said, um, there is an opportunity uh, for students who enroll in the MIT micro, ex, micro Masters in Finance to be able to, once you complete those credentials, it's a credential, um, once you complete those credentials, to be able to then um, apply, you would still have to apply for the Master of Finance program separately and be admitted to the program. What it does, however, is if you've completed the credential in the MicroMasters of Finance, you then um, would not need to actually participate in the summer term. So keep in mind, the MFIN program has, three, has the summer term uh, that starts in July, followed by fall, spring, a summer internship, and then a second fall term. So that first summer term is um, would be waived uh, for anyone who has completed the credential. I would encourage anyone who's interested in the Micro Masters in Finance to go to um, their website. I believe it's micromasters. Uh, mit.edu, um, but it, I'm sure you can easily find it online as well. Uh, there's all kinds of information about how to enroll and what you would need to do in order to then um, take that credential and apply and then apply to the MIT, uh, MIT Sloan MFIN program. But yes, absolutely, you can do that, but it is a separate, you would still complete the MFIN application. 
quick one um, that I think would be helpful for a lot of people. So, um, sorry, Jane, you might have mentioned this already, but we look forward to the application going live later this month for both of these programs. And we do not uh, evaluate on a rolling basis. So um, if you apply, you know, in uh, August, uh, okay. If you apply, you know, just before the deadline in January, that's okay too. And so my advice would be to take your time because there's no advantage to applying early. Um, you will not get your decision early. You will not be interviewed early. Um, take your time uh, to put together a strong application that does not feel rushed. Yes, and, I, and I, I, I would also add to that, that our standard is that you're applying in the year that you intend to enroll in the program. So that's also an important thing to note. Um, so you wanna really give it some thought and, um, and what makes sense for you in terms of launching your career and being able to get the skills that you need to be able to do that. Is this the year that you wanna do it in? Um, because there is only one intake. So just, So some people um, I see have asked about the, your major uh, might not uh, be, you know, explicitly something in math or engineering. And, you know, we will, as part of the evaluation process, we are going to dig deeper into your transcripts to see, have you had that quantitative exposure? Um, so even though your major might not, you know, um, scream um, STEM or, or something, you know, that we've talked about today, we will look a little bit more deeply to see that you maybe have taken courses um, that do align with some of those skill sets that we're looking for and how well you did in them, of course. I think that the way to look at it to just expand on what Stephanie just mentioned absolutely um, is the case. And also, you know, we take a look at, and I know this sounds like a bit of a cliche, um, your applications from a very holistic vantage point. We, yes, all of those areas that I mentioned um, a little earlier in terms of your academic background, your professional experience or internship experiences, your communication skills, all of those in, really um, make up for what we are looking at um, in terms of who you are as a, a potential um, student who, you know, the other way to look at this is the, the rigor of the programs is such that we want to stretch you um, intellectually and academically when you come to MIT Sloan. Um, on the other hand, we also want to ensure that you are able to take full advantage and leverage and maximize all of the great resources that MIT has to offer. Because you want to spend your time on the academics, but you also want to be able to join the clubs, participate in competitions. We haven't even talked about all the different centers. We have the, the, the Lab for Financial Engineering. We have the Golub Center for Finance and Policy. Um, the Media Lab, the Martin Trust Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, there's so many different activities that um, you might want to get involved in. And so you need to think about, you know, we all learn differently. So what is it going to take for you to be successful academically? And how are you going to be able to do that in such a way that you can enjoy and really engage in the MIT ecosystem? Diane, one thing I'll add as far as opportunities outside of, uh, you know, this curriculum that we've discussed or even clubs and conferences is the opportunity to work closely with a faculty member on research. And that's something that many um, of our students uh, are interested in and opt to take advantage of. Um, this is a great opportunity to see what the research experience is like to, you know, better understand uh, a deep dive to, to get to know a faculty member uh, well. Um, so that's, you know, a, a process that, that we'll talk about in a little bit more detail as you sort of are after the, um, after you're admitted, uh, but it's certainly an opportunity. Um, I see a question about um, whether there's a disadvantage for infant students who follow the 12 month track in the perspective of job placement. Um, so in terms of career resources and providing you those resources, 
Um, the program was initially um, designed to be delivered in 12 months. Um, we expanded it and, and now have moved to an 18 month um, for a number of reasons, primarily for the individuals who are in the 18 month, many of them have had some exposure to the finance industry or maybe have not had any, but see it as an opportunity to be able to do an internship for that reason. We also have students who are in the 12 month because they may have had already some internships and aren't necessarily looking to um, or feel that they need to get additional. They, for example, we have central bankers uh, or individuals who are coming from sovereign wealth funds who for them taking a year away from those jobs um, is a lot of time and they just want to build a deeper skill set, uh, particularly as it relates to quantitative finance. And so the 12 months is it totally enough time for them to be able to do that and um, be able to go work for those governmental organizations and for other students in the 12 month um, they are able to be very successful i would encourage you to take a look at the most recent employment report which is available on our website it goes into a lot of detail about where infant students um, land from but the 12 month as well as the um, internships uh, the other thing I will um, say about, you know, just being able to participate in the 18 month and one of the other advantages is that for some of our students, it's a small number, um, want to go on to do a PhD. And so being able to be in the program a little bit longer um, gives them more time to work on a thesis as well as potentially do research with faculty. And all of our infant students do have that opportunity to um, to do some research with faculty. Our faculty um, are very involved with our students and very happy to be engaged with them when they can be. There's a lot of questions coming in um, around COVID-19 and I will start by um, giving a big shout out to uh, the, everyone at MIT Sloan and MIT more broadly um, the International Students Office has been working tirelessly to uh, make sure our international students um, can have the opportunities um, around work authorization and, and other, you know, you know, helping them sort of think through visas and how to, to make that happen. Um, also, though, at like this, this coming year, um, it's my great hope that you, as a, a member of the next class, um, that things will, will have uh, calmed down a little bit. That said, this coming year for those entering this fall or for infants who've already started the program, um, there will be both uh, sort of in-person opportunities uh, as well as virtual uh, courses. So um, from an admissions perspective, and Diane, please chime in on any of this, but from an admissions perspective, we have, um, you know, try to be as empathetic as possible to your situation. We know, you know, grading structures have been different. We know uh, internships have fallen through. We, you know, we are, are well aware of that and will um, be supportive of, of you and, and empathetic to your situation um, through COVID. Yes, and, and, and I would say again, it, it, do we have um, so many people at MIT, when I say people, staff, faculty, alumni, students, working together to find solutions. I feel pretty confident, um, and of course, uh, I'm a little biased because I work at MIT, but I feel pretty confident that there's a lot of really smart people who are working to help solve this, this tremendous challenge that we're also facing. Um, I would also say that if you are interested in learning more about what we are doing, uh, there's a, quite a bit of information, uh, particularly as it relates to the COVID-19 challenge online that you can take a look at that MIT is doing. Uh, there's also separately, we've had, for those of you who are interested in the finance program, uh, the Gallup Center for Finance and Policy has had a number of online uh, forums talking of just about this and, and how it's impacting the financial marketplace. Uh, so lots and lots of work being done around COVID-19 and how we create solutions uh, and how, and we've got work streams uh, looking at how we can, you know, best uh, fulfill our um, goal of really giving you a rigorous education. Um, 
um, a question and answer. For those who are applying um, from international schools, uh, so outside of the US, um, you do not have to provide additional materials or do any sort of translation uh, on those transcripts or your GPAs. We're very familiar with um, all of the different grading systems across the world. Our uh, evaluation teams have a lot of experience um, understanding what it means to get certain grades in certain parts of the world. Um, and so we'll be able to interpret that um, and, and fairly compare you to other applicants. Diane, do you have any advice for people who are um, who are not seniors this year, who still have a couple years left in undergrad to <laughs> prepare? Yeah, absolutely. Great, great. Thank you for asking the question. Uh, so I would say, you know, definitely if you, a couple of things, uh, really build on those math skills for finance. It is, is so valuable. I can't um, overstate. Um, the importance of having some of the foundational or elemental mathematics like linear algebra, probability, statistics, multivariable calculus, any and all of those would be um, really helpful. Um, and students have found that it's really been an advantage as they go through the program. The other thing I would mention um, is computer programming, R and Python in particular. Um, presumably by the time you're ready to apply to the MFIM program, those will still be the most important and valuable computer programming skills. Um, but these are the kinds of things that um, will, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. You want to get the most of your time. 12 or 18 months goes by very quickly. You'd be shocked um, as many times of a, as I talk to prospective students and say that um, many don't really believe me until they actually come and start the program and realize that MIT has so much to offer, they can't possibly do all of it in the amount of time they're there. Uh, and so it, it's really um, to your benefit and advantage if you get yourself to into a place where you're as best prepared as possible so that you can really uh, engage in some of those other activities. But thank you for asking, it's a good question. Um, someone asked for a little bit more detail on the MBA on Capstone. So um, the way you are um, sort of partnered with the organizations uh, and your teammates. So I can talk a little bit about the logistics of that. So, um, I think I mentioned earlier, but you are working with one other classmate. Um, and um, so you will sort of uh, rank um, how, who you want to work with. And so once those partnerships are determined, um, there will be a period of introducing the various projects and the various companies to all of the MBA and students. And you and your partner will determine um, again, which ones you are most interested in and which ones you are least interested in. Um, and a part of that will also be an interview with those companies. So it is a two-way process. Not only are you deciding who you're interested in, but they also, the companies, also want to see which partnership, um, which students are going to be best suited uh, to work with them on that particular project. So you'll interview with the capstone companies that you're interested in, uh, along with your classmate that you're working with. Um, and then you uh, and the companies uh, will um, rank at those you are most interested in. Um, and an algorithm will determine um, which the two actually pair uh, together. So um, it's a very, very uh, thoughtful process and um, it is not, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that's taken lightly. We really do want to uh, make sure that everyone involved is having uh, a great experience. 
I know, I see <laughs> about, um, the MFIN application and choosing between the 12 and 18 month options. So thanks for the question, um, great question. So what will happen is when you apply, you're applying for the 18 month. However, there is a checkbox, there, there will be a checkbox in the application if you are interested in the 12 month only. Um, that said, um, there will be an opportunity for students after the summer term, but before the start of the fall term, first fall term, to um, accelerate to the 12 month um, with uh, authorization and conversation with the MFIN program office. And that's really more just to talk through the academics of it um, and you know how much that's going to impact you for the time, the rest of the time that you are in the program. So at the application, you will be applying for an 18 month program with uh, a checkbox if you are at the time of the application, 12 month only. Uh, if you have um, not checked that box, but at some point after the summer term, during or after the summer term, but before the fall term, you are interested in accelerating to 12 months, that is a conversation you would have um, with the program office. And, and I'll add to that that, you know, while we have an expectation you're coming into a graduate program, and so our students, um, at least the ones that I've seen who have been successful, are pretty self-disciplined and directed. The fact of the matter is that you have so many resources available to help you navigate, whether it's through the courses and bidding when it comes that time, uh, whether it's careers. Um, you are going to meet individually with dedicated academic advisors who are going to help you to sort out, you know, what are the courses that I want to take into addition, in addition to the ones that I'm interested in? Do I want to take a concentration, for example, if you're in the MFIN program? So we don't leave you entirely to your own devices, but it's really helpful for you to do the research, come in with a framework and an understanding of what you want to get from your time in our programs. So we have a few more minutes, Stephanie. Uh, let's see if there's any more. Sure your patience there's so many great questions coming in <laughs> we should also mention please you know it's here on the slide do not hesitate to email us um, we will answer your questions as quickly as possible uh, and so we welcome emails about you know questions you might have that if unfortunately we cannot get to them this session uh, we will also have additional opportunities, uh, upcoming opportunities for you to join um, other activities that are more program specific as well. And can you uh, touch a little bit on um, programming like how strong of a programming background do students need for the MFIN program? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So while it's not required, um, I will say and tell you that uh, it is really valuable because once you um, students start the program in the summer term and not long after the summer term, we will actually um, administer a test on programming literacy. And the purpose for that test is really to see how what your familiarity is with, with coding or programming, again, particularly R and Python. If we feel based on the test that you need additional um, help with it, we will enroll you in a data boot camp. So again, it's just um, something that it's not required at this time, but highly encouraged. And it certainly goes to what I said earlier about wanting to have the time to spend on other activities that might be of interest to you um, while you're at MIT. Our students are very, very active in clubs, very, very active in a lot of the conferences, competitions that go on on campus, networking. Uh, I don't have to tell all of you, I'm sure, that you know, networking is a very important aspect of being successful today. And, and hopefully the people that you get to network with and meet at MIT 
you will take with you for a lifetime. So, so it's something to think about if you've had very little exposure and you want to just get that um, under your belt, so to speak, before you join. Uh, there are many online courses that would be perfectly suitable for you to do that. Do you want to take one more? Uh, sure. sure. Okay. Oops. Um, so uh, we have a big international uh, contingent in both of these programs. Uh, can you uh, just clarify who needs to take the TOEFL or the IELTS test? Yeah, so, um, and again, keep in mind that we haven't yet established what tests are going to be required for the 2021 application um, period. That said, in the past, um, the requirement has been, and I think this is pretty much across the board with many of our peer schools as well, is that you, you um, must have completed your entire undergraduate education uh, in English. And then there are some specifics around um, some countries that have English as another official language, but it's not the primary official language. So some of that is available, <clears throat> excuse me, on our website for you to take a look more closely, but we have not yet established those requirements. So again, stay tuned, more to come on that. Great. Great. Sounds like a good ending. Stay tuned. All right. Stay tuned. Yes. More to come, more activities, more ways to engage with us, ask your questions, be part of our community. Um, thank you again to everyone who's joined us. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you to my colleagues in admissions. Um, we're excited to be able to talking to you and we look forward to the day that we can do this again in person. So everyone stay safe, stay well. Thank you again for joining. Bye-bye.